Good evening. I'm still reporting on the coup. On Friday night, Rob Schmidt, the ace leadoff news guy on Newsmax at 7 p.m., reported on the devastating events of the last few days on the burgeoning corruption case implicating Fawny Willis, the apparently corrupt DA of Fulton County, Georgia, who indicted Donald Trump and 18 other Trump supporters on racketeering charges. Fannie Willis is working on borrowed time, it appears. The Georgia State Senate today voting to investigate her for corrupt misconduct. She's up to her eyeballs in allegations, accused of having an affair with Nathan Wade, the special prosecutor that she hired, misusing taxpayer funds for personal travel. Wade, for his part, met multiple times in 2022 with White House staff and billed the state of Georgia for it. He made more than $650,000 working on this case. He spent a lot of that money gallivanting around with the woman who hired him, Fannie Willis. Alana Austin has an update. Rob, Georgia Republicans tell me this is about fighting for truth and accountability here. The critical thing is that Republicans will have subpoena power to compel witnesses to testify and also so they can demand critical documents. On the motion, the yeas are 30 and the nays are 19. This motion has prevailed and the previous question is ordered. The GOP majority Senate passed this resolution along party lines. The committee will first need to appoint members, pass rules, and then dive into the accusations of prosecutorial misconduct by Fonnie Willis. Georgia Republicans say this is about protecting taxpayers and ensuring integrity of the justice system. GOP lawmakers say a potential scheme is unraveling, with Nathan Wade's divorce filings indicating he spent thousands on travel to Napa Valley, Miami, and the Caribbean. On Friday, a member of the Georgia Lower House filed articles of impeachment against Willis. Intelligence sources told me weeks ago that at the rate Willis had been spending on these 19 indictments, Fulton County, which is already financially stressed, must be putting Willis under incredible pressure to give up on her witch hunt pursuit of President Trump because the cost was likely to bankrupt the county. Sure enough, as it turns out, one commissioner, Bridget Thorne, has been following the spending as best she can, but is outraged by the lack of transparency from Willis. On Tuesday, she said she would continue to pay close attention to the DA's spending. I feel I have every right to ask questions. What are we spending on? How much is this costing us? A few days later, it was revealed that Fonnie Willis's lover, whom she hired as one of her three special prosecutors, Nathan Wade, has been paid four times the amount that the other two law firms in total have been paid during the same time period, 2002 to 2003. Wade's total billing to Fulton County has been $653,880 for those two years of work. It was also learned that Wade made several trips to the White House to meet with Biden and or his staff in secretive talks. Could it be that Joe Biden is somehow picking up the tab for continuing the Trump prosecutions? As you peel the onion back, more details of mismanagement and poor judgment continue to surface. Also today, the House Freedom Caucus Chair of Georgia, State Representative Charlize Bird, filed articles of impeachment against Willis, saying she believes the DA is corrupt and in violation of state law over conflicts of interest. State Senator Randy Robertson voted to launch the investigation into Fannie Willis. He joins me now, along with Joe DeGeneva, former U.S. Attorney in Washington, D.C. Mr. Robertson, we'll start with you. What exactly are we in for here? Well, I think we're in for a legitimate investigation into the conduct of someone who is elected to carry out the law enforcement duties in a county, someone who's not allowed to allow their political leanings or their own personal feelings to interfere with doing their job. And I think we're going to have an opportunity to have a uh, stellar committee together uh, that will be able to look in these allegations in a legal manner, uh, not in a politically driven manner and find out exactly what's going on in this office. Joe, uh, you know, it's, is there any way that she can survive something like this? I mean, I, and, and, and can the case survive this? Well, any, any, anything's possible in politics. And yeah. today, anything is possible in the law. She shouldn't survive this. That's the real question, because she has violated every norm 
that any reasonable prosecutor would want to want to follow. She's violated the standard of the American Bar Association for prosecutorial conduct. She's done things which in any manner would get somebody fired from a job. If she were an assistant DA, she would have been fired for what she has done. The conflicts of interest, the personal relationships, the public money being spent on private purposes, the list is endless. The most important thing here is, is that the Georgia Senate Committee has subpoena power and it sounds like they're going to use it properly, and that's a very, very good thing. General, you see these people that have, have, have managed to get these positions. I mean, we have all of these just broken, corrupt DAs, these bizarre Marxist DAs all over this country. And, and you, how scary is that? I mean, what's happened to, to the justice system? What's happened to law and order in this country? Well, it's very, very frightening to people who believe in the rule of law, because when you have corrupt district attorneys and prosecutors and when you have a corrupt Department of Justice in Washington, D.C., you ask yourself, where do I go to get justice? And the answer is increasingly these days, not very many places. One of the good things about this investigation, by the way, Rob, is that they probably will have an opportunity to look at how the charging decisions were made in this case and by whom. Because this RICO case, by all accounts, against all these individuals is one of the most disgraceful criminal prosecutions ever brought in the history of the United States. It's baseless in law and fact, and I hope that the committee gets into that because the public needs to know about how ridiculous this char these charges were from the very beginning. I'm still reporting from just outside the former citadel of world freedom. Good day.